Hey there guys, what's going on? So if you've been watching me here long enough as uh, 2012 has progressed in full and a little bit of 2011 that I did, um, you'll know that vinyl is a big part of what I do around here. Uh, whether it's unboxings or uh, reviews on new vinyl, all sorts of different things. It's a big part of my process and my collection is something that's always growing, always being added to. Um, I'm always going to record shops, or one record shop in particular. Um, I'm buying online, all kinds of things. I'm adding from all different sorts of musical genres and places. And, uh, you know, from time to time, if you watch me, you'll know this, but if you don't, um, I like to do sort of my latest vinyl haul of like the last uh, period of maybe the last several weeks, maybe the last month or so, and just sort of mention the more notable things that maybe I've picked up at the record store on my jaunts out, or, you know, I found as a good deal, something along those lines, and I like to put them together and do a little uh, latest vinyl haul segment for uh, for this particular period of time, and uh, who knows, like my, uh, my last video with my unboxing, this may be my last uh, major vinyl haul video of 2012, and, uh, you know, Let's do it in style, perhaps. So, uh, most of this is uh, from my latest uh, track out to Angry Mom Records in Ithaca, New York. I like to mention those guys a lot. And uh, as always, if you uh, happen to be near that area or going that way, uh, you definitely need to go stop and see them over in uh, the commons of Ithaca. And, uh, you know, they are a fantastic shop. Uh, great, uh, great group of guys there. Uh, great with recommending new things, uh, helping you out with whatever you need. They have a great selection of stuff there, and uh, I always like mentioning them and uh, plugging them because they run a fantastic business out there. And uh, even if, even if there was like another record store that was like the size of like Amoeba out in California, um, I would I would go to where to where they are to where Angry Mom is because. Um, it's got that great hole in the wall feel to it. Uh, it's in the basement of a bookstore. It's just got this great feel and this great vibe to it. And once you're in with, with, uh, you know, with guys that really know what you like musically and that you can sort of talk with musically about different things, it's, uh, it makes for a really awesome and a really fun experience. So on my last check out there, I picked up some really cool stuff. First of all being... Sergeant Pepper, the uh, the reissue version, which just came out uh, not too long ago here. Um, now, I really haven't added a whole hell of a lot to my Beatles collection uh, to this point. I keep meaning to do it, um, whether it's like solo John Lennon stuff, uh, the couple of George Harrison things that I have. Uh, you know, I keep I keep meandering about that way. I keep thinking, well, I want to add Rubber Soul. I want to I want to pick something up by them to to add to my collection because the only things I really have right now, uh, before this anyway, uh, were a couple of old battered copies of Abbey Road, um, which seem to be quite plentiful uh, from what I've noticed. Um, but they, they play really excellently. And uh, a pretty nice copy of, uh, of Beatles 65, which I had actually heard about on a television uh, special just at random one time and decided that I wanted to, to pick up, and I eventually uh, was able to get out there and get that. But, you know, my Beatles collecting really had stalled. And the Beatles were really influential to me from my childhood and growing up, and I heard a lot of their music. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's tough because in the vinyl world as I've grown to collect and, and stuff, there's been a lot of uh, different side paths I've wandered down and a lot of different bands uh, I'm being introduced to even still, which I'll talk about here in a little bit, actually, with some of the other things that I got. Um, but in this instance, you know, I, I um, was able to get there and their Beatles reissue stuff was just sort of being on the cusp of coming out. And, uh, you know, I, I looked through and kind of got a sense for some things and, uh, this one definitely appealed the most to me. Um, Sgt. Pepper actually isn't one of my, like, first and foremost albums that comes to mind when, I come, when it comes to the Beatles, which may seem like insanity to some, given um, in the high esteem that Sgt. Pepper is held in. But 
Um, you know, all the same, I decided I thought it would be a really interesting thing, not only because of how it was remastered, um, but the fact that all of the original artwork um, is being restored here in its exact uh, original, um, you know, in its original state, uh, right down to things that were included inside the original packaging as well. Uh, so I thought, why not? I definitely, um, I definitely could see adding that to my collection, having it be a pretty cool little, um, a little aspect to that. And, you know, with the, uh, you know, with this, with this album, and there's so many good songs, uh, one of Ringo's select good ones, a little help from my friends, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and, uh, two of my personal favorites, actually, which are Within You and Without You, and, uh, She's Leaving Home which really is a very underrated song that I actually didn't know about for a very, very long time until I really started to uh, not just hear the Beatles, but sort of uh, excavate into them on my own. And sort of a conceptual uh, record here. But of course, this is the famous cover with all sorts of different uh, celebrities and individuals uh, tacked into the background there. And there's a full uh, explanation of that inside. And there's the back cover, of course. And a pretty nice gatefold. This would be pretty cool artwork to have, I must say, with all of uh, all the Beatles' faces inside there. Probably if I didn't care about this as much as I do, this would probably make excellent artwork all around. And in one side here, we have uh, cutouts, which I guess were included in the original uh, album, which is pretty neat. A little weird, quirky stuff. Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. And uh, an explanation of who everybody is on the cover. And uh, a couple of interesting little uh, notes there about who had to be painted out because they either wanted a fee or it was a request to VMI, etc., etc. And inside here we have uh, an explanation on some of the, uh, the sound, some of the mastering, um, notes on the cover, how it was designed. Uh, different uh, information about the different songs uh, when they were, you know, originally uh, put together and recorded, all the information in regards to that. Um, I'd actually, for anybody who uh, might be watching this video in the future, I would actually love to know some more information about um, this particular set of reissues because this was, um, to my knowledge, I mean, the first major um, repressing of all the Beatles albums, um, as far as I've ever known, because before that it was, um, kind of always just, when you got to the end of the year lists for vinyl, it was Abbey Road right at the top for, like, the last two years, I think, and it wasn't anything else because none of their other stuff was really in a print run. Uh, so I'd be interested to know a little bit more about this exactly, you know, what uh, what are the opinions on this particular, you know, run of, of this repress uh, for the Beatles albums, you know, what people think of the sound quality. I know there's a different version uh, coming uh, at some point with these, which kind of seems like a jip, but uh, I'd be curious about that as well and what the overall thoughts are. And also with this, because I like to show off the cuts of the vinyl, um, this is the original psychedelic sleeve of sorts that uh, came with this originally that was uh, faithfully redone for the new vinyl pressing of this album. And if I could find the hole from which <laughs> the opening is, uh, there's the cut of vinyl, nice and sturdy there, uh, the, uh, with the Parlophone label right in the middle. Another thing I love about vinyl and going through, uh, whether you're finding stuff that's been faithfully redone as this has, or just finding old stuff in general, kind of seeing the different, um, you know, labels in the center and the pressings and stuff, uh, that's pretty neat to always, to see the different ones and all the different, uh, designs that different companies used in whatever particular era said album came from so you know that that that's very interesting i'd love to know more about that but that's the beatles with sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band and next up here we have a couple actually that are the same band that very much intrigued me and i will predicate this by saying that i do not know a hell of a lot about this band i do not have 
um, the major um, infatuation and love of this band that a lot of people do, um, that I respect to a uh, you know a great deal. I respect that a great deal, and I'm trying to uh, learn a bit more about that, courtesy of my uh, of my pals over at Angry Mom, and sort of on my own, given I've downloaded their, a lot of their stuff digitally. Um, but you know, in vinyl, it's got a great sound, and I'm. It's actually because of this band, and when I, I heard, when I was able to hear some excerpts from one of the albums I'm going to show here in, in the shop at Angry Mom on the really good speakers, um, that has really made me curious um, and open to wanting to upgrade my own equipment now that I've had sort of the standard thing for the last couple of years, because I really would love to experience that pounding rich sound of things like this and in this particular case this would be the clash with both london calling and give him enough rope uh like i said um i don't have the deep level of admiration and love that a lot of other people do and i wouldn't try to pretend that i do um but i'm definitely uh learning to uh respect sort of the heavy thumping uh, punk rock aspects of what of what the clash represents and truly the absolutely amazingly pure rock and roll vocals of Joe Strummer. I, I, I don't think at any time that I've listened to uh, someone that is just so rock and roll, so on the edge of just punk rock, uh, have I ever heard a voice that was just so perfectly made to do it. He was made to do this and just that harsh raspy uh full throttle just growl that he possessed from beginning to end it always was like that uh listening to his stuff with the mescaleros and uh just how impressive um just just he was in general but just as a band really and the stuff that they composed and uh hearing that even in in excerpts in the shop and just hearing the uh, the just the absolute energy of those guitars and the drums and and just sort of feeling the significance of just pure red blooded punk rock rock and roll music and just just the absolute effect of those kind of things and so far as I've listened to these I've just been uh, continually impressed with um, with the styles of them in here is the front cover of Give Him Enough Rope and the back and inside here of course with the cut of vinyl nothing too like exceedingly heavy or thick but you know sturdy as it is nice little uh, epic little insignia there in the middle and we also have the front of the very iconic London Calling. Excuse the fact that you can clearly see it was ten dollars. <laughs> and then on the back here, um, I know that this album has particular um, iconic status, uh, a lot to do with its cover, also a lot for its music, and uh, I'm trying to learn a lot more about the latter aspect of that as opposed to just the uh, the former and only knowing a band by thinking, oh, the cover's cool, I'll wear it on a shirt or something minor like that. Um, you know, I'm curious a lot about the uh, about the various uh, musical aspects. So, and this is a double double LP in this particular instance, uh, with uh, all of the lyrics written crosswise on all of all of them here, up and slanted. And <coughs> inside, I'll just show. One, because they're the same thing, of course. Pretty much the same deal as Give Him Enough Rope, same insignia, same sort of feel to the vinyl. Uh, they're a little weathered. Uh, you know, for 10 bucks, it was a little, uh, you know, not perfect condition, but um, they, they, they seem to sound really good. No real major issues with scratching or, um, you know, their weathered state or anything like that. Sounded really, really good. Um... And then here, actually, here actually is another interesting um, side experiment in a mixture of psychedelic blues rock and the origins of heavy metal and the guitar music that was soon to come. 
This is Blue Cheer with Vincibus Eruptum, a late 60s group that I think was most known for their song uh, Summertime Blues, uh, which was uh, right away just sort of hits you right in the gut, um, as a lot of this record does, because it's just loud and brash and the leads in it in particular there's a lot of great guitar work in it a lot of great leads that just kind of uh you know just pop right off of uh right off of the sound and just really hit you and as a guitar player myself um it's what really drew me right away and got me really uh to to really just pay attention to it and just really get sucked in right away uh just a different uh leads and style of playing and uh, you know, this is this is why it was particularly tough to get Beatles stuff because when you have guys at the sh at this shop who can make such awesome recommendations like this, you can't help but appreciate it, and uh, you know, and really get allow yourself to be exposed to a whole new uh, genre, a whole new feeling, and uh, you know, stuff like the Clash and Blue Cheer here were really um, just such positive aspects of that. And of course, here's the cover and the back side of the sleeve. All this is, of course, single fold. Um, and inside here we have the Philips Insignia. Same sort of, uh, you know, decent cut, not like really heavy, but solid all around. And, uh, you know, another band that I'm really interested in excavating uh, and excavating more and really. Uh, getting the getting the deeper sense of uh, louder, lead-driven, bluesy, psychedelic rock and roll, that side of things, and, and uh, I'm definitely enjoying where that, uh, where that path has led me so far. And next here, as we get down to our last couple, we have The Jesus and Mary Chain, which this is actually not one of their main albums. This is Barbed Wire Kisses, which is B-Sides and More. Um, definitely not a band I would, this is actually a promotional, uh, copy as well, speaking of which, which is pretty interesting. Uh, not a band I would have gone for. See, again, the power of recommendations and being able to hear, uh, excerpts of this and really want to excavate more. Um, but really another album that I found to be interesting. Very, I don't know if it's almost sort of quirky, electronic, sort of offbeat. Um, you know, sort of a style I would not have expected to be, you know, attracted to, uh, late eighties sound to things, uh, and some of the most unlikely covers on here with, uh, Who Do You Love, which, um, you know, Carl Perkins did that very old country song, um, or, you know, or, uh, uh Bo Diddley, I think, God, don't quote me on that, but, um, I, I'm just I'm hearing all these different these different artists in my head sing that song, and uh, it, definitely these were the guys that I would not have have thought to you know would do this song, especially when the very next song is "Surfing USA" by the Beach Boys, and you know that comes right out of left field. Like, dear God, where does that come from? Especially with um, sort of an offbeat group like this, but um, I found it to be really. Uh, really ingratiating and I found that I really uh, really enjoyed that and um, I like hearing covers of songs especially to go back to that for a second where everything is just kind of flipped on its head you're not hearing it sort of in the same genre you're definitely not hearing it note for note you're hearing a whole different uh, a whole different take on it you're hearing just a completely different ratio of things you're just it's all thrown out and, you know, put together all wrong but perfectly right at the same time. And this is, of course, the cover. And the back cover with all the songs. It's a little jam-packed with songs on each side. Um, I know it's, you know, quality-wise, you don't want to stuff it too full because once you get to that point, you get into dangerous territory with overall sound. Um, but it seems to be uh, pretty decent. And this is the... Uh, Warner Brothers insignia, both sides there. Again, a nice sturdy uh, vinyl cut, nothing too overwhelmingly spectacular, but pretty nice all the same. 
uh, you know, again, just more discovering. That's what I love about these record store visits and really getting uh, to know these guys really, really well. Um, it's just the things that you can uh, be led to and the things that you can discover on your own, even if you can't remember the difference between Carl Perkins and Bo Diddley and who covered what and what year. But that's another story and another ramble for another time. Uh, last here from our uh, Angry Mom stack before we get to the last one at the very end, which is just kind of a last second throw in, uh, we have the first solo album from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Uh, now, I've, I've heard Tom Petty for a long time, as I think uh, anybody who's ever really listened to, uh, you know, the radio stations like uh, the hits of, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, and today, you know, blah, blah, any of those, you know, pretty much, pretty likely you've heard Tom Petty from someone. And, uh, you know, and I never really delved to a deep extent. You know, I've heard all the greatest hits, uh, Last Dance with Mary Jane, all these, uh, you know, all these different, all these different hits that he's had over the years, continuing into now as he's still cranking out records. Um, you know, a great solo record a couple of years ago. It was technically considered a solo record, and uh, coming back with the Heartbreakers uh, recently. Um, a lot of great work that he's done, and this is uh, sort of the deepest introduction I've taken to it with his first solo album, and, you know, that has led to some different songs. I mean, uh, Breakdown is on here, and, uh, you know, American Girl is on here, um, which, again, sounds great over good vinyl speakers coming out of, uh, coming out of the turntable, but, again, that's another story. Um... And, you know, again, it just leads to this, just the the solid musicality of uh, of Tom Petty and, you know, being, you know, being surrounded by Mike Campbell and Ben Montench and guys that he's kept with him throughout that have just made him better as an artist. And just as I believe it was put the day that I bought it, just good old nasally American rock and roll. And, you know, it's not, maybe not quite perfect, but the sound absolutely is and i have definitely enjoyed this uh, a heck of a lot it's just a wonderful record to just put on and crank up loud and here's the front and here's the back with all of the uh, open shirted uh, hairy <laughs> past era glory of these fellows here and inside again we have the MCA Records logo this time. Pretty nice solid vinyl. Once again, you know, no real differentiation there. All really good sounding stuff. No, um, you know, nothing other than a little bit of uh, maybe some hissing, little pops and clicks here and there. But, uh, you know, nothing that's not the vintage loveliness that is vinyl. And, uh, you know, just more great additions to what is already a great uh, collection of stuff that I'm just continuing to build on all the time that I love a great, great deal. And thank you to Angry Mom Records in Ithaca, New York for such an awesome opportunity to collect such great stuff. And then here at the end, just a little bit of a very, very, very last second throw in, we have Owen with the Seaside EP. Like I said, it's a little out of left field, but I just received this uh, in the mail the other day. Uh, this was actually delayed uh, for a while before. Uh, it was a pre-order, actually. It wasn't so much delayed. It just took a while to, to come out um, because uh, Polyvinyl Records, which is Mike Kinsella's label, um, was doing a run of color vinyl for Owen's discography. Um, and pretty much the only thing I didn't own already was this, um, which was actually... Uh, not only going to be on color vinyl, um, but was also going to be, I think, its first time released on vinyl, even. So uh, it had sort of a twofold effect, and I wanted to finish off my uh, nice little collection of Owen vinyl, so I made sure to get, uh, get out there and pick this up. Uh, and I'll just quickly show you this. This, again, this is sort of contrast to the uh, if you watched my uh, Andrew Bird uh, Hands of Glory unboxing video, um, where I talked about the color vinyl that appears in that video, um, that's a really cool 
vinyl, really well done. Uh, no knock to this because you know it's a nice, it's a nice thick cut at the very least. But it is that clear sort of see-through kind of thing going on. Not really a deal breaker. You know, not saying that it automatically is going to be inferior, but it just, I mean, if you can see through it, it just kind of feels like it might be a little bit more inferior. Um, but, you know, nevertheless, it's a good weighty, you know, uh, a good weighty piece of music. And uh, I haven't gotten to listen to it. I just very, very recently acquired this, uh, but I wanted to feature it in one of my videos. I actually haven't heard any of the songs off of it either. This does come with a download card as well. Uh, here's the front cover and the back. And from what I can uh, tell you here, um, there are six songs, three songs on a side. Uh, there are two covers, More Than Words, originally done by Extreme, Stolen Bike, originally done by Bruce Springsteen as Stolen Car. Uh, most of these songs were just bedroom recordings, except for one which was done live. Um, I think it is one of his earlier recordings. Uh, again, I would imagine probably in that very uh, stripped down, somber, acoustic way that is very Owen and very Mike Kinsella uh, for that matter. And, you know, it's just a nice little addition to pretty much cap off my collection in that regard. And uh, one that I'm very, very glad to, uh, to add from another great label like Polyvinyl Records, uh, who's always uh, offered a lot of great selections of things, whether it's like Owen, the Japan Droids. Um, they've got a great uh, bunch of artists on that label, and they always send great things, and they always send candy. And frankly, when can you go wrong with something like that? But that is it. That's all of it. All of my vinyl finds recently that I felt were especially of note that I wanted to share here with you all. And if this is the last, uh, you know, current vinyl finds video of 2012, which it very may likely be, um, I hope you enjoyed all the stuff that I managed to bring in and collect. Um, I'm looking forward to showing off more to all the vinyl enthusiasts out there as I continue to build my collection. It's uh, It's been a very exciting year for a lot of this stuff as we bring it to a close for 2012. And I look forward to a lot more content in the future. But until next time, guys, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. I will see you all very, very soon.